I don't know where the fuck the sales meeting link is, but I started it. Yeah, it, it, I couldn't find it either. I can't find it in Zoom, but I was able to open it by just clicking the link from my email and it set, recognized me as the host of it, but I don't know what the fuck I did. So sorry. <laughs> do you want to just play music then because you're um, yeah, what do you want here? Hmm. You can play my house because it's about open houses. Our house in the middle of the street. You should do that too. Um, <sighs> Recording in progress. Life used to be so hard. Now everything is easy because of you. Gentlemen, Keller Williams, Greater Metropolitan, welcome to our sales meeting this afternoon, all about open houses, um, and a little tribute there uh, to Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young uh, as we talk about open houses. What better song to open and close the meeting with than Our House? going to uh, jump right in <clears throat> this week, as we do every week, with respect to uh, our belief system as a company. So these Y4C2Ts uh, are something that we talk about a lot throughout our 
uh, you know, during our career nights, during every, every training, every event, every, um, uh, every opportunity we get, really, this is a great explanation of how we can support, uh, or excuse me, interact with one another, interact with our clients, interact with other co-brokes. Uh, and the one I want to highlight today is one that has come up in this very brief week uh, twice already. Uh, and it is one that uh, I attribute some constant uh, reminders to engage with uh, to our broker, Andrew Ginter. Ginter is always reminding me uh, of the belief uh, and the definition of the belief around communication, which is to seek first to understand. We as humans like to play the game of jump to, to conclusions. <laughs> and uh, so often we hear something, see something, experience something, uh, and we start to assemble all the pieces together, uh, draw a conclusion, and then we're off to the races, whether it's the lack of response from a co-broke, or it is, you know, the way that a message was communicated. There's a lot of different um, uh, things that can start popping through. And uh, I think it's great that this is such a pronounced belief for our broker as well, which is to seek first to understand, ask good questions, engage. You know, um, there's a lot of different things going on in the market right now. We're experiencing all markets at once. Some areas are dry. Some areas are hot. It's still a seller's market, but interest rates are getting wonky. Um, and not not Larry wonky, but they're getting all over the place, right? There's some changes, uh, changes to uh, what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are doing. And so, you know, when our client tells us like, oh, okay, this changed, I can't buy. We don't just hop off the phone or, oh, this is changing. I no longer want to sell. We want to seek first to understand and really get a grasp of what's their motivation. Why, why do they feel the way that they do? How are they seeing this impacting them? And then explain, uh, you know, how we can help them navigate through it. So as you go through, uh, as we go through this week, um, sorry, uh, let's go ahead and uh, seek first to understand in every interaction that we can. Uh, reminder, uh, you've been getting emails, phone calls, text messages, uh, and other, uh, well, I guess that's all the, all the forms of, and emails, uh, uh, all the forms of harassment that we have engaged in to make sure that you do the one thing that you need to do to stay in business, uh, which is pay your board dues. So make sure that that's taken care of. Uh, they are due. Uh, Monday is the deadline. So get moving and grooving on that. If you have questions, or you need any additional uh, support, or you're looking for clarity on who to pay and when, where, and how, please reach out to Julia, Carrie, Kate, anybody on our leadership team, and we'll get you funneled into the right spot. All right, uh, you guys saw some communication over the uh, last week, and then again over the weekend. Um, want everybody to, uh, to know that uh, this marketing pack went out to all of our agents. There's uh, items in there that'll be great for a listing presentation. There's items in there that'd be great for a social media post. We've seen a lot of you engaging in uh, taking over social media with celebrating all of our big wins uh, as a company and obviously celebrating your big wins as individuals as well. Um, so congratulations on another great year. Um, uh, officially the first full year that Keller Williams was the number one brand in Northeast Ohio. Uh, the third consecutive year that we've shared over a million dollars back to our agent agents, uh, fourth consecutive year with over 4,000 units closed, second consecutive year with over a billion dollars in sales. Uh, and so lots of really great things to celebrate. Most importantly is your individual businesses, right? The one, those of you that grew or, or used them to uh, otherwise fund your perfect lives. Uh, and really excited for 2023. Uh, there's a lot of chatter out there in the world about real estate, but I tell you, we're processing and closing checks and paying people every single day here in the office, uh, you know, a dozen or more a day, basically. And so we know that the units are still closing and that you guys are out there working hard. I know that there's full pipelines going in to uh, the end of this month in February. So congratulations on that. Uh, we also highlighted uh, more profit share coming out of this office than any other office in the world. 
number one for the first time, Keller Williams Greater Metropolitan, number one market center out of uh, close to 900 in the Keller Williams ecosystem. So congratulations to all of you. Those of you who are uh, benefiting from profit share, enjoy it. Uh, we're looking to keep that train rolling. And if you are not yet participating in profit share and want to know how you can, I'm your Huckleberry. Give me a call. Uh, reach out, let's set up a time to chat and we will uh, we'll help you uh, get your unfair share when it comes to profit share. And another great uh, great image there for everybody uh, around Keller Williams is the number one real estate brand in Northeast Ohio. So that's an aggregation of all the Keller Williams offices versus any other brand, right? Howard Hanna's got 60 offices, you roll them all up, they come in second, we come in first uh, and then on down the line. Uh, followed by uh, some other brands. Last night, we had a career night here in the Pepper Pike office. It was awesome. Big thank you to uh, so many people who helped us fill the room. Uh, we had everyone from you know just dipping their toe in the water to in classes to finish with classes. We had three people uh, request the opportunity to be sponsored by our brokerage for the real estate exam after last night. So a really great opportunity. Um, and really excited, uh, not only about the number of people uh, that are coming through these, uh, but most excited that the majority of them are coming by way of you all, which means you're going to be participating in profit share even more. And they come with a, uh, you know, with a little uh, asterisk next to them, knowing that if they're referred by one of our agents, they're probably a good person uh, and somebody who's going to jive well with our mission, vision, values, and beliefs as a company. Next week, we continue uh, the Career Night series in the Rocky River office. Uh, there will be a Zoom option there as well. So even if somebody missed and they live on the east side, uh, they couldn't make it last night, go ahead and get them to register. We'll get them a Zoom link and we will get them all the information they need to maximize opportunities in a career in real estate. And then our top performers for the month of December, a strong finish across the board. Um, uh, great December overall, uh, inline uh, performance-wise with uh, a great year overall. Um, so I want to congratulate all of these folks. You'll see this show up in uh, the Facebook group. Uh, and if you haven't already seen it with some specific highlights for the individuals, um, so congratulations to all those folks. Great finish. And um, I think there's going to be a lot of competition for top performers in January based on uh, based on what we've seen come through the gate so far. We started a new partnership last week uh, with a group called the CE Shop. So it is a uh, it's an online uh, company that provides continuing education uh, and pre-licensing classes. Uh, and so for you all as agents, if you have any needs related to continuing education, if any time in the next six to 12 months, you are going to be renewing your license, uh, you can get it uh, on the cheap, as they say, you can get it on the cheap here at uh, this through the CE shop. So we have that linked through our website, 297agent.theceshop.com. Uh, and you can use PB2022 as the discount code to save 40%. You can buy those now, and then you don't even have to start them for six months. So if you're renewing any time in the next year, just go ahead and take care of it. Save yourself some money. Make it easy. Um, and then you can also, if you have no idea where to find this or, oh, what was the link, just go to our website, 297agent.com, and you can navigate to it from there. You can also navigate to scripts and uh, call schedules and opportunity time and our YouTube channel and everything else that we have as a company through 297agent.com. All right, exciting upcoming training tomorrow. If you have not got a ticket yet, there are a few remaining. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic session. I've actually uh, been uh, texting back and forth with some of my counterparts in the state of Michigan. This program is taking place in Detroit today, uh, and then it will take place here in Cleveland, Ohio tomorrow. And so I've heard from the team leaders uh, and some of the agents in Michigan already that this is an awesome program. Matt and Donnie are both outstanding presenters. Uh, Matt, a part of the executive leadership team for Keller Williams, Realty International, and Donnie 
uh, a regional uh, a regional leader for our company as well uh, out of the Florida region. This uh, could not be more timely for the market that we are in, uh, and it could not be more beneficial uh, for anyone uh, at any stage of the game. Uh, both of these individuals have been through multiple shifts. I know Donnie Brookman looks like he is about 18 years old, but I promise you that he is an experienced real estate agent and knows his way around a market. And then Matt Green, um, over two decades of real estate experience uh, and the last probably three or four years uh, at the Keller Williams Realty International. So a great program, completely free to you, 100% free uh, for uh, for agents in, uh, in Keller Williams here in Northeast Ohio. So take advantage of it. Get a ticket now. Uh, I think the link just went in the chat or if you need it. Yep. It's currently sold out, but we have some extra tickets just from the Market Center. So if you want to go and you haven't gotten your ticket yet, um, you can email me, Michael or Julia, and we can get you on the list and communicate with you about that. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Carrie. So yeah, uh, if it is sold out, then please go ahead, uh, reach out to us. We will get you on the, uh, the short list. We have a couple extra tickets uh, here sitting on the sidelines. Uh, on Thursday of this week, uh, we had a uh, we have our second installment of an event um, called All About Real Estate Teams. Um, so, in a ever changing real estate market, uh, teams become uh, teams are a big part of what we do here at Keller Williams. Uh, we were actually the number one place uh, for teams in Northeast Ohio. We've helped more people uh, more quickly do more business through teams uh, than any other brokerage. And so, uh, and one of the things is like, hey, um, that doing more business thing, that's, yeah, okay, is if I'm a rainmaker and I start a team, but um, there are also uh, agents, uh, the, the, the team agents uh, perform at a very high level as a part of real estate teams. I tell people all the time, the number one thing that you could uh, know on whether or not a real estate team is right for you is yourself, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about what does the world of real estate teams look like? Uh, what would it mean to join one? How do you explore it? How does it impact um, things like your opportunities, your commissions? What are your commitments, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. Uh, this is open to everyone inside of and outside of Keller Williams, uh, licensed, unlicensed. There's a great opportunity here to just educate yourself. So we had a great turnout on the east side uh, two weeks ago and are looking forward to uh, to continuing that this week on the west side in the Rocky River office Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. And then um, on February 8th at noon, Eric Ukbar uh, brings his annual uh, sellout class. I want to be real clear. Seats will be limited here, and this is a an incredibly impactful class. And I think the earliest that we've got it on the calendar in the last few years, um, which is it's about reducing taxes and gaining leads. So uh, every year for the last several years, uh, home values have appreciated. And depending on the uh, assessment cycles, taxes can potentially go up for your clients. So a very easy touch, a very easy way uh, to bring value, a mofer, if you will, a make offer for immediate response to help people navigate what's going on, um, save money with their property taxes, and ingratiate yourself as the realtor of choice, because um, nobody loves anybody more than the people who help them save money. Um, and this every year will uh, end up in someone realizing they don't they didn't realize how much their home was worth and how much their taxes would be. And what do you know, they're just going to go ahead and sell their house. So great way to uh, to invest time, energy and resources and get into action uh, on February 8th, February 9th. Our awards night uh, will kick off at 530 p.m. on Thursday, February 9th. We have an awesome lineup for this, guys. Get your tickets now. Uh, they're absolutely free. It's going to be a wonderful night celebrating uh, one of the best years in the history of our company and our 20th anniversary. We're going to have rock stars of the past, present, and future uh, highlighted. We're going to have special guests. We're going to have, I mean, you know, there's a dance number that I'm working on. There is a lot of stuff. Uh, that's going to go into this dance number is not actually yet confirmed, but I'm trying to get it on the agenda. We're going to have a ton of fun. Uh, it is an awesome celebration. 
And if you're somebody who's like, oh, I don't think I'm getting an award, you know, or, oh, I just started. No, we want you there. We want everybody there. We're celebrating our success as a company. We're celebrating the success of our other uh, uh, colleagues and co-brokes, or excuse me, our uh, colleagues and fellow Keller Williams agents. Uh, and we're celebrating 20 years of Keller Williams in the Northeast Ohio marketplace. So get your ticket now, uh, get in there, and uh, we'll be excited to celebrate with you. And then on the 13th, Monday the 13th at 1 p.m., Terry Shimaleski, who is a MAPS coach, uh, is asking the question, do you already have 25% of your goal for 2023 closed or pending? So if you wanted to sell 40 units this year, here on January 24th, do you already have 10 units closed or pending for the year? If the answer is no, put 1 p.m. in Pepper Pike on February 13th on your calendar. And Terry is going to be taking us uh, through uh, a jumpstart course to make sure that we can get back on track. So often we see agents, uh, and, and I'm not just talking about like new agents who stumble out of the gate or or, you know, like people who, oh, I took too much time off during the holidays. Just anybody get a little bit behind, stray from the path just a little bit, and then completely give up on their goals by March 1st, right? And what we want to do is be in, and pour into you and get out the jumper cables and juice that business. If you don't have 25% of your goal down or pending already, that's okay. We can course correct as long as we get to it early enough. And that's what Terry's going to do. She's going to be deploying... Some of the uh, things that she deploys with her clients through Mega Agent Productivity Systems Coaching uh, with you that day. So February 13th, 1 p.m., be there. Don't miss your goal. And then finally, our CE for February, two hours of CE in the Pepper Pike office. Courtney DeMarco will be taking us through no content, no problem. Uh, 31 days of Facebook posts. So uh, if you're somebody who has uh, a, an item on your GPS or your 411 or one of your strategies for this year is getting more active on social media, uh, Courtney will make it super easy and turnkey for you to do that. Uh, and you'll pick up a couple of hours of CE along the way. All right. We're going to kick it over to uh, the money mustache. Excuse me. The mortgage must. I mean, excuse me, Sean Hadley. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get that. Let's get that up on the big board. Let's pin that. Let's fill people's screens with that. Uh, and let's uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about what's going on. Uh, I know you're trying to distract us with that caterpillar, uh, you know, uh, around what's going on with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. All right. So, yeah. And, and uh, I was going for Tom Selleck. I think I landed at fascist junior high vice principal, but uh, it'll be short lived, but we'll, we'll, we'll run with it while we got it. So a couple of things and, and we may run a little long here, but um, yeah, try to keep it succinct. So um, first off, the Fed meeting uh, next week, it's been on the calendar, you know, uh, for quite a bit and a quarter percent bump to the Fed rate is is pretty much the expectation probably with another quarter of point in, in the meeting uh, that follows in March. These are all expected. The interest rates we're throwing out there today is, is in anticipation of that. Um, there was a big sort of announcement that had been coming that formally uh, rolled out on Friday with the data that we were waiting for. Um, and I put a post, I just put it in the uh, chat box now, and I put it on the Facebook page yesterday, kind of a, a mortgage blurb about it. But it's going to explain about what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac is doing. Um, the acronym LLPA stands for Loan Level Pricing Adjustments. So what Loan Level Pricing Adjustments are is, um, and, and Don, Chris, please jump in here, especially if, if you need to correct anything I'm saying. But, um, you know, back 15 years ago, um, somebody applies for a mortgage, whether they had a 650 credit score or an 800 credit score and 5 or 20 percent down, they were getting the same interest rate. So interest rates were, we use the term priced, um, pretty much level across the board. Well, back 10, 12 years ago, they started loan level pricing adjustment, which says, you know what, for somebody with shakier credit, we're going to charge behind the scenes points. Basically, there's going to be costs that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are charging. And the lender either has to charge these to the buyer or bump up the interest rate to offset those. 
So we've had these loan level pricing adjustments in place and, and they've, they've, they've moved a little bit over the years, but it's been pretty subtle. Well, it just kind of announced that within the next couple of months, there's going to be some pretty significant changes. Um, you know, we usually consider 740 credit score and five or 20% down kind of the A plus kind of the highest tier when it comes to interest rates, where they're moving the goalposts a little bit. Now, you know, you need a 780 credit score and 20% down to get or 25% down to get that same kind of par interest rates. Um, so that 740 credit score buyer now, in order to get the par interest rate, um, might now have to pay a point instead of not having to pay any points or a quarter of a point or just a fraction. Um, in addition to that, there's a bump to this pricing if your debt ratio is over 40%. So historically speaking, somebody with a higher debt, higher debt ratio should be considered a higher risk, but it was never really if that, you know, is part of the, are you going to get the loan or not, or how much you're going to borrow? Now it's also going to impact the interest rate. Um, condos, or excuse me, I'm sorry, second homes are pretty much exactly identical as investment property. So if you're buying a vacation property in Florida or Marblehead, um, the, the interest rate was better than investment property. Now those are all put in the same bucket. So this isn't something that necessarily I would say, hey, run out and tell every buyer that you know be aware of it. When somebody calls and says, hey, what's, what are your interest rates today? Well, it used to be like, well, there's a little bit more to it. It's going to depend on your down payment and your credit score. Well, now it's going to depend not just on the down payment and the credit score, but is it over 740? Is it over 760? Is it over 780? Is your debt ratio below 40, uh, uh, under 40, over 40? Is that not counting a bonus or counting a bonus? There are so many more questions. And um, this the timing on this can't be great, um, obviously, with affordability already sort of being a hot topic, um, inflation being what it is. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, we are seeing things improve, and, and there's a lot of optimism that inflation is, 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 has curbed and, and will be going down and interest rates will follow. But this, in the end, is, is an extra cost and a, and a spike to interest rates. So this is just kind of formally announced on Friday, so it kind of hasn't seeped in today's interest rates but it's gonna be something that we're gonna be seeing and, and conversations we'll be having with customers here in the short term. So, um, Chris and Don, did I summarize that pretty good? Anything you guys wanna add? Nailed it. I mean, there's not much really else to say except um, this change is gonna affect May 1st. We don't know if it's gonna affect pricing 30 to 45 days earlier, because I'm not sure if it's when these loans are delivered, but um, it's gonna coincide uh, these, the, the, cost to free, the cost of finance is gonna be greater could coincide with a little drop in interest rates. So it's gonna wash itself out come May, June. Um, so there's the good and bad of it. So what's the what's the conversation that I can take to my database or to my clients? You know, uh, the, all this hits and then, you know, uh, Jim Cramer and everybody else on the squawk box is saying that the sky is gonna fall and Salesforce stocks going to zero. Like what, how do I actually get on the phone and say to somebody that's in my pipeline who is planning on buying this spring, like, what do I need him to do? What's my call to action? So I would sort of sort of control the, I don't know how, you know, if this is going to show up on everyone's Twitter feed and be headlines, I think this will be kind of buried a bit because it's too complicated to explain to the homeowner. The good part about that is you get to kind of, you know, control the headline, control the narrative a little bit. So I, I would kind of, you know, if I'm talking to a customer saying, hey, you know, as we're rolling into the spring, you know, we're, we're hoping and we're feeling is that we may say interest rates improve. Well, behind the scenes, um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac with conventional pricing, you know, how much, uh, you know, a given person's interest rate might is changing based on their loan characteristics. So I would say sooner rather than later, have that conversation with, you know, your friendly neighborhood loan officer. And hey, if you are thinking about getting into the market, there could be a financial benefit to you know finding that house in the next couple of weeks as opposed to March, April, May. And if I'm talking to a seller, hey, you know Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are making it slightly more expensive for home buyers. Um, there's an opportunity here. You might have a you know a, a swath of buyers looking to get into the market sooner than later. Get your house out out there, out there now. Don't wait until April or May. Um, so those are maybe just a few bullet points I would throw. This so anybody in my pipeline that is motivated and is planning on at some point this year, I can I can use this to maybe reframe timing for them, and 
this is a this is a great reason to say, hey, listen, you know, some things are changing with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. I, I can't just say that, like, you know, the prevailing rate right now is 6.25. I really want to put you in touch with my my lending partner to make sure that, you know, when we're looking at homes and, you know, you're out there plodding along in the snow uh, and the wintry mix that's coming that uh that you're doing so in a price range that they can actually deliver on so should i also go back and revisit with anybody that was maybe holding a pre-approval um i i can i can create urgency around the idea yeah. of like hey now but before may 1st is good right you're, you're you're good on this and if you got a longer timeline let's revisit it to ensure that um you know we don't you know I don't fall in love with a house, go to write an offer on May 2nd and realize that I got a half a percent uh, variance in my uh, interest rate. Well, Sean, yeah, if, yeah. You know, if, we, if we couple this with our buy now, save later program that our branch offers, anybody who buys a house between now and January, January 3rd and closes between April 15th, 2023, for the next two and a half years, they have until 1231, 2025 to refinance their home for a $1,500 lender credit. So when you couple it with that, the sense of urgency, let's get you closed by April 15th. So over the next two and a half years, you know you have a $1,500 savings by coming back to Cross Country Mortgage after you've made the first six payments. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, one other nice little, you know, nice little uh, follow-up announcement that, that buy now, refi later, that's that's a no-brainer. I mean, every buyer I tell would say, okay, what do I have to pay for that? No, it's free. You're going to get a certificate at closing. Mm -hmm. And then we have another special for first-time home buyers. Any first-time home buyer, conventional buyer making below roughly eighty-five thousand dollars is going to qualify to get these loan-level pricing adjustments waived up to a certain amount. So, if you're a first-time home buyer making eighty-five thousand dollars, even with shaky credit on a condo and a high debt ratio, we can make these go away. And that's something so far up to this point. It's been unique to Cross Country Mortgage. Um, it's. It, it, I'm shocked with with that little carrot that we've thrown out there it's it's a home run do they have to take a class for that sean they don't good question they do not have to take a class now if they're under 60,000 uh, 68,000 first time home buyer and take a class we can discount their pmi so we'll be looking at, at all all options which brings me to shift tactic number 4 which is find the motivated Guys, if you have somebody in your pipeline who wants to or needs to buy or sell, get them in the conversation and relationship with these three guys, uh, specifically your buy sides, because uh, they just rattled off four different programs and packages that can reduce, eliminate, protect, or forecast a discount for them in the future. Um there's, there's literally no better leverage for you in a market where we expect interest rates to go up. We expect things to continue to change. If you've got one of these guys on your side, they will, they will not let the deal not go through. All right. Now, if you've got more questions, comments, concerns, uh, and the like, um, here's all their con Here's a reminder of all their contact information. Reach out to them, get your clients in touch with them. Even if you have another lender engaged, get them involved just to make sure that you're maximizing the opportunity for your clients. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. And Thanks. Viva la stash, my friend. Keep it. Keep it. The longer you have it, the more likely it's going to be that I'm going to be able to pull it off. All right. Now we're going to throw it over to our friends at GM Title and Escrow. I think I saw both Tiffany and Jade on this morning or this afternoon. I'm in uh, 2022 sales meeting mode. So good afternoon, ladies. How are you? Good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. All right. So today I am going to talk about, I don't know if you guys have all received my email, but the COT system cyber attack and how that affects us. So on December 26th, um, the system COT had a cyber attack. And unfortunately, some of our counties use COT. So 
Um, they were down, I believe, from December 26th until the 18th, so about last week. So how that affects what we do is unfortunately during that time, um, we were unable, well, our examiners were unable to pull searches from there. All public records were down. There were no searches going in and out. And the counties that they that were affected in our area for this were Ashtabula, Lorraine, and Portage County. So I just want to make that clear, you guys. So if you guys have any deals going on in that county, please reach out to the title companies, see where they're at. I'm sure there is going to be delays um, with those closings due to they weren't able to run searches searches on them. Nothing was being able to be recorded. So do yourself and your clients a favor, give the title companies a call, just get an update on those, see where they're at, um, and then kind of go from there. Um, Tiffany, is there anything else that you want to add to that? Sure. Uh, so every title company is different uh, and every underwriter is different. So any properties that we've already run a search for, we've already cleared title, we already have payoffs. If the titles were pretty clean, in nature, meaning there wasn't a ton of liens, you know, issues, things like that, we are going to move forward with closing and dispersing them as we normally would. We will not be delaying already existing orders for this reason. Um, so you guys are probably aware on, in the lending process, um, Sean and, and the guys over at Cross Country, right before your buyers get ready to close, they run another credit check just to make sure they didn't buy all the patio furniture on credit, right? So we do the same thing. We update title work right before we close and disperse. And the reason for that is to make sure no new liens have been filed. Um, there's a lot of other things that go into it. The seller signs an affidavit stating that there's no new liens, no work has been done and so on and so forth. Um, but the gist of it is we do run an update right at the end to make sure we're clear. Our underwriter has given us the okay with all the files we have open to go ahead and close. They were all clean titles, no issues whatsoever. So we're not gonna be delaying any closings because of this. Um, the closings that might get delayed are what Jade said, the ones that have just been opened uh, that might be closing in the next 30 days, we probably don't have title work back on them. The good news is that all of the counties are back up and running full in full uh, here in Northeast Ohio. Um, the only one that's a little bit behind is Portage County in that they're still scanning in documents from after January 3rd. So they're a little bit more behind um, in getting the documents scanned in. We don't yet know either what, COT has really not sent out any information. Um, it's There's nothing on their website. There's very, if you were to Google this, there's very few, very little information about it. Um, so what I will say is we don't know yet what the ramifications are for people who have their socials and date of birth in the system. Uh, that would not be at the auditor and recorder. It would be more at the probate side, divorce, you know, domestic relations, things like that, where there are socials on documents. Um, so nothing new there. We don't really know what the ramifications of that are yet. We do know that none of the counties here have lost any information. So there, as you can imagine, we look at a title search for every document that's been filed for the last 42 years. There's not gonna be any breaks in that, which is great news for us. So I did, I did another sales meeting this morning and they were like, oh, you and Sean with this bad, next time we'll bring something fun, <laughs> I promise. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's really important for everyone to know, check with your title companies. If it's not us, check in with them. Are you closing on time? They may not allow your deals that were already open to close on time. Every title company is different. So when you work with GM title, this is the service you get. Which brings wait, me wait. to shift tactic number 12, bulletproof your transaction. What's yeah. you guys keeping a deal together or going and finding a new one and running it all the way through? If you've got a deal pending with any title company, take the 30 minutes following this call and call them, ask them, uh, you're checking in, want to make sure it's still going to close on time. How's the COT system impact this, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. And that way you can manage expectations backwards and forwards. Again, and that's then, Ashtabula, Lorraine, and Portage County, just yep. to remind you guys. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thank you. Guys. All right, over to uh, Miss Gina Legaza. Gina, long time no see. How you been? Uh, I'm doing great. Just came back to work after six weeks being off. 
yesterday officially. So Ooh. my surgery went very well. Uh, ready to be here for our agents and our clients. And I just want to say Happy New Year and thank you guys for a fantastic 2022. So my favorite subject um, that we're going to be talking about quite a bit is listings. And when we speak about bulletproofing our transaction, regardless of the temperature of the market we're in, it's always a fantastic idea to make sure that your clients are protected. And the way to protect them on your listings is to make sure that you list with a home warranty. And here's why. When you list with a home warranty, your client doesn't pay anything till we go to the closing table. And they get complimentary coverage during the time of listing. They get up to $1,000 in coverage. I mean, this is fantastic. Another great way to pull proof your transaction is when you list with that home warranty, if we get a buyer and they go under contract, let's say the buyer chooses to do a home inspection and things come up, that seller can open claims after the fact. So if they, they just found things out during the buyer's home inspection, they can call our 1-800 number and open claims. You guys want more listings this quarter? Give me a call. We've got door hangers to help you canvas an area that you're thinking about breaking into. Agents that use my door hangers got an additional seven to 10 warranties last year. Seven to 10 more deals with this tool. Who doesn't want more listings? Utilize this marketing tool. You just put it on the door. It's COVID safe, COVID friendly. Put it on the door and say, hey, if you're looking to buy or sell in this market, choose me to list your home. I mean, who doesn't want more listings? So you're going to hear me talk about listings a lot this quarter. Um, uh, anybody that's in bold, I'll be there next week with bells on. Come and say hello to me. And just thank you guys as always. I'm so thrilled to be back. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Great stuff. All right, we are now uh, going to throw it over to our feature teacher uh, for the day. His name's Rocky Melendez. He's a member of the Chase Group. Uh, been in business going four years, Rocky. Is that right? Almost six now. Actually, this Almost would be the sixth year. Six. Almost six. You make it look so easy. It seems like it's less. Uh, but Rocky is uh, is going to be our feature today talking about open houses. Guys, you're going to see and hear and feel a lot of focus from us on our trainings and on these team meetings around lead generation. Most people think open houses exist to sell listings. Uh, they actually exist to generate leads. Uh, if you watched my Facebook Live earlier, about 10% of all transactions, 6% of buyers and 4% of sellers find their realtor at an open house. So anyone who tells you that open houses don't work, doesn't know how to work them. And if you have tried an open house and you feel like it doesn't work, then Rocky's going to teach you how to work them because he's built a fantastic business, fantastic business through open houses. So Rocky, I understand you have a presentation. You need to share screen and do all that jazz, is that right? Yeah, so I'm gonna kind of bounce back and forth from the like the web browser and my presentation just so that you guys can kind of get more more of an idea of what I do to for the open houses. Yeah. Um, cool, yeah. so I need to share my screen, right? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so like what Mike was saying, um, I'm a big advocate for open houses. I think they help leverage your business. Um, just like listings do. And actually, I mean, on our team, it's required. You're, you gotta do at least one a week, but the best way in the name of the game is just getting in front of people, right? Having conversations, meeting with people. Best way to do that is open houses. Um, even if it's not your listing, you're getting in front of people is just, they're gonna think you're that uh, valuable asset they need to get more info about the house or the market in general. So um, like, most of the time, I will say that um, most people that come through my open houses too, um, they think it's my listing. And in fact, it probably isn't. It's probably someone else in the chase group or someone else's listing, right? But most people aren't even noticing who's the actual listing agent, but they just know that they want to be in the house. Um, so just being able to 
get face to face with people, it's huge. Um, so I'm kind of going to go through the best digital practices, stuff that I do before the open house, um, the day of the open house, and then kind of the follow up after, and then just go from there. So let's get into it. Um, all right. So with our team, we submit, we have an open house form that we made through Google. Um, you have to submit it by Wednesday. And the reason we do that is so that it gives a proper amount of time to market the um, that the fact that there is going to be an open house before the day of. Um, so typically we're doing it on the weekends. A lot of times we'll even do it on the weekdays, but I would say whatever, however your business works, if you're an individual agent, just try to start marketing at least like three to four days before the open house itself. Um, and so what leads to what's leading up to that is the most important uh, steps. So I would say 90% of open houses, or sorry, all of my open houses, 90% of the work is done prior to the open house. And then when you're at the open house, it's kind of just like smooth sailing. Um, so what I do to market open houses, obviously you gotta be on social media. I'll make a small post in my story on Instagram, Facebook saying, hey, I'm gonna be here this day, this and that. So here, I'm gonna make a jump real quick. All right, so can you guys still see me? Yep, we can. Oh. So like one thing, just a small thing I do is I'll make a little post on my page saying the address, um, phone number, or not phone number, the time, just a couple of things about the house. Um, and then I'll post some photos from the MLS. I won't do all the photos because I want people to um, at the at bottom of my post, like I'll put something like, hey, click the link in the comments for more info. And I think that's super important because you get them click and on, at least for our team, when you click the link, it takes you to our site that we have through our platform, our CRM, Brivity, which uh, prompts the person to type in their info to get that those pictures or details. Um, and why it's even more important is it goes straight to me, as you can see here, Rocky right here. Uh, so it's going to go straight to me, it gives me an opportunity to follow up with somebody and, um, you know, invite them to the open house or see, hey, you know, are you looking to buy or sell? You know, most people that check things out, they're either looking to buy for themselves or they're curious on their home's value. So which one are you? So two things real quick. I, I, I don't want to I don't want anyone to miss one uh, post on your business page, everything that you're doing related to uh, an open house. So, Hey, I'm holding this open house. There's a bonus move of getting the first comment, right? Posts with comments, get further up the algorithm. So put your link in the comments to get it there and then link to your website, your app, your page. And you know, Rocky has a, uh, a a data wall set up. You can do that with KW Command. He's doing it with Brivity. Um, you know, you can do it with whatever C CRM you're using. And then, um, you know, that allows for anybody who sees it and just wants to look at pictures. Yes, you capture their information, you get them on a drip and you follow up. Second thing, Rocky, great script. And I want everybody uh, who's, if you're ever thinking about doing an open house, this is the only script that you need while you're physically in the open house. Give it to us one more time. Hey, you know, most people that are looking at these houses or come to our open houses, they're either looking to do two things. They're looking to buy or they're looking to see what the value of their home is. Which one are you? So. Uh, Everyone who attends my open houses is either uh, a buyer who's interested in uh, what's on the market or a seller trying to figure out what their home is worth. Which one are you? That is a binary question. They either have to answer A or B. If you ask anyone, hey, what brings you in today? Oh, just looking, just killing time, whatever, right? And so your opportunity to advance the conversation down the right path exist by making them choose a path when you first engage with them great script rocky thanks man um i forgot you made one point but oh the crm like if yeah if you use command i think that's great just have something that you're keeping organized because if you are using command um you know you can i know you can tag people put what city they're looking in and then when you have an open house in that city make sure you're 
sending that house to them. Hey, I'm going to be here this weekend. What are you doing? Easy. So, yeah, exactly. Um, another cool thing, like I'm being pretty biased right now, but you know, I just kind of mentioned it. So make sure you're sending it to people in the areas that they're looking in. But we were able to kind of just uh, with on brevity, at least you have the listing there that I was just looking at. You can check and send to the 12 matches that have been looking and stuff in North Bridgeville in that price point. Um, so I think it's just important that, you know, whether it's your sphere or somebody you've talked to in the past, make sure you have stuff that stay organized so people know, uh, or you can always, it's just an attempt to contact too. Whether they're, it's a house that you know that they're not gonna be interested in, it's the attempted contact that matters. Mm -hmm. um, so what else I do uh, prior to the open house, I'll post the, um, the open house on any like garage sale pages, community pages. So like that one was in North Ridgeville, um, like garage sale page or community, something like that. I don't know. I join as many as I can. So wherever that city house is, just whatever garage sale or community pages you can get, post them there too. You never know who it's going to lead to. But also I put the house uh, as a listing on the marketplace and I usually get a lot a good response from that. So just a good a good example from that. Um, one of my listings about a month or so ago, I put in the marketplace. I had somebody follow up on it, like, "Hey, did this sell?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it did." But good news is we have a ton of other listings. What areas are you looking in? And uh, she gave me some insight. Got her pre-approved. She bought the next house we we checked out. So it's just kind of having being. Ex, ex, as exposed as possible, I guess, is super important. And whether those listings are already sold or not, just leave it on Marketplace. Um, I guess if you're doing an open house for someone else, just make sure it's okay with them. Um, mm -hmm. But I think just having more opportunities, even though like there might be a 1% conversion rate of it, it's super important and it's just more leverage for you. Well, and, and you know, it's another way to get your name out there. It's another way to be where the be where the people are um right for sure yeah I, I, before you move on i also want to call out one thing can we can we stay on that tab real quick uh, which one just that one uh, oh, uh whoops right. my bad any i just want to point out got it look at uh look at the the uh the bookmarks below the search bar on rocky's uh rocky's web browser does this look like somebody who does business Brevity dashboard, command dashboard, Chase Real Estate home group page, uh, trend graphics report, open house form, net proceeds sheet, right? So I would just, it just occurred to me, like you are set up to do business when you are working, right? And I'll be honest, I forgot that was there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I yeah, I just look at like, you know, I see some people's computer and it's CNN and people.com and USA Today and a bunch of, you know, and Wordle. Um, you know, that's just great. If you need that, bang, you're right there. Seller asks a question, net proceeds sheet, right? So I just yeah. a little shout out to your organization there, whether or not you yeah, no, definitely. I mean, those are my most used links. And um, I'm glad though that you mentioned trend graphics because that's something I actually take to open houses too. So since we're on it, um, let me get back in here. Um Stuff I bring to an open house, I take the MLS form, um, print out like the print out, you know, just more info about the house. I will do, I'll bring the trend graphics. I'll go on Canva and I'll make some, you know, quick graphic just saying, hey, here's what the the market's doing month over month or year over year. Gets just to get more info for people to grab and say, man, this guy really has a lot of a lot of info for us. Um, but it makes it easier too to smooth the conversation. You know, if you have nothing there for someone to have, and you're just like, "Hey, you wanna you wanna work together?" Like that's probably not gonna go far. <laughs> Whereas if you have some handouts that you can give them, you can say, "Oh, also I have this," and then they might mention something about what they're looking for. Oh, you know what? Here's some statistics about that. So just having more readily available info, I think, certainly helps. Um, I don't know on command if there is a like a um, registration form, but I know in Brivity you can sign in online. So 
I would say like, as long as just make sure when you're at the open house, you either have the Wi-Fi password or you have a hotspot. Um, Cause I think if another cool thing, what I'll do is if someone says, you know, yeah, we're here at the open house, but we're really interested in this area um, over here. Then I go straight to my laptop. I pull up those areas. I'm like, Hey, um, what about these houses? What do you think of these? Something com comparable. And then um, kind of just keeps the conversation flowing again. But uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, just one more thing to, to, to touch on real quick. Before the open house, I think it's super important to circle dial and to just send it, invite as many people as possible. So if you have friends or family that live in the area, just make sure you're sending a quick text or call like, hey, I'm going to be here. Hope that you can make it. Or if you have any friends or family that you want to live by you, um, then invite, invite them to the open house. Tell them about it. All right. And so I, I guess uh, in get into the morning of the open house. Uh, make sure you make another post. I think that's highly recommendable. Um, have your sheets. Make sure you know the lockbox code. Can't tell you how many times somebody's done an open house on my team and might have forgot to, to get the lockbox code. So they're calling me, you know, 10 minutes beforehand. Just have all that ready to go so you don't have to think about it. Um, I usually get there about 20 minutes early. I bring my business cards. I'll bring consumer guides too, just in case someone wants to go check out some houses after. Um, hotspot, we talked about that. Research some of the area. So again, I think I kind of mentioned this, but make sure you, like, you know so the schools around there, uh, parks, stuff that people can, might like. If you see a family walk through, they might like to know that there's going to be a park around or you know something recreational to do. Um, or the schools is exactly. But um, also just know um, pretty much what other houses are available. Know your market, so to speak. And 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 just to be clear, Rocky, how long does it take you to just like kind of get a ten thousand foot view, one sentence answer to questions about like, hey, what is there to do around here? Not long. Yeah. Not I mean, long. two, five minutes. I don't know. <laughs> yep. And, and no, and, and I think it's just like, it's one of those things. If you build this checklist of, all right, do I have all the just listed? Great. Do I have all the just sold? Great. Do I know, you know, everything within a mile? What school district is this in? Great. Great. Uh, and then, all right, I'm ready to rock. Anybody can ask you a general question and you can give them an answer that keeps the conversation going, right? When you right. say like, I had an hour of the schools, you're like, I don't really know. Or like, hey, what's there to do around here? And it's like, I check Google Maps. I don't, you know, it's like that. those things are what kill the opportunity for you to uh, uh, turn a set of feet walking through an open house into a client. Yeah, I mean, that's super important. I think even about the house, like if it's not your listing, you're typically not going to know as much as the listing agent about it. So what I'll do is I'll ask them, you know, the day before or something, just, hey, is there anything I should know about this? Are there common questions you're getting from your other showings? Um, what's some stuff that, you know, you think is valuable info? Because nobody wants to be the person where you're at the open house. Someone asks, how is the roof? Oh, I don't know, you know. But I mean, if you reward it differently and you don't know, just, Hey, I don't know, but I can get that answer for you. What's your, I hope you signed in. So then I can send that to you um, after the open house, something like that. Um, so yeah, doing the open house again, just, it's super simple. You don't need to make it complicated when people are there. I know some people get mean about like making people sign in. Um, I like to build some rapport first. Um, cause if someone wants to work, if someone doesn't want to work with me and I make them sign in, like, I'm not going to get that business anyways. So I kind of feel it out, you know, talk to them, start a conversation, and then I ease into them signing in or I find something at, by asking them questions that they're looking for or some info that I feel that they need. And then it gives me an opportunity to, you know, have that contact info for me to follow up after, um, whether it's a, another listing or something else that they're looking for. 
Um, or what I'll mention too, which I hope everyone else is prospecting for some off-market opportunities. But if someone's looking specifically in a neighborhood, you should be saying, hey, you know, if we get another off-market opportunity, because I know this house isn't for you, you said that, um, what's a good context so I can reach you and let you know before anyone else? So just having, providing that kind of value is, is uh, I think, key too. Um, what else? So just adding them to your database, or I guess we should we talk about that, the follow-up? Did you have any questions about that, Mike? No, no, I think that, I mean, you know, you, you did it. That's a, one hurdle is, hey, how do I get people to sign in to engage them? And uh, we already covered the script. The only script that I think you need when you're holding an open house is people who come here through here are one of, one of two types of people, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, in terms of data capture, you already hit on a couple of good things, which are one, you get them into whatever CRM you're using. Uh, you know, everybody in here has access to command. It has a ton of capability. If you're on a team that provides a, a different, or if you uh, have invested in a different CRM for yourself, or if you're just like, hey, Google Sheets is going to do it for me. Um, that's fine. Just make sure you're getting, you know, name, phone number, email, and then Rocky nailed is where, where, where are they looking, right? Um, if they're looking in Middleburg Heights, you can grab stuff in Berea, North Olmstead, and Brook Park and other places in the surrounding area because they are, um, you know, they might be open to those adjacent areas. And to his point, like if even if they think they have a realtor, if they hear from you about three different properties in the next 10 days that have come on the market, when they have a real estate need, they're going to think of you first. Definitely, definitely. Um, LP Mama, just have that ready to go. LP. Now, what? Well, now, wait a minute. Now you're dropping acronyms here that not everybody might know, but that sounds like another fantastic script. All right, putting me on the spot. So, oh, like, uh, well, so LP Mama, location, price, uh, motivation, area, uh, price, or like money and agent. Right. So I think you got, uh, you put price in there twice. You got two yep. P's instead of two M's. Uh, and I'd love to know the difference between location and area. Hey, I don't know. I just right, so throwing it out there. The LP mama for everybody. If uh, somebody help me out and put this in the chat. This is, a, this is a buyer script that everybody can use to quickly qualify a buyer and know what your next step is. Location, where would you like to buy? What areas are you interested in? Price. Right? Is there a price point that you are considering? The first M is for motivation. Now, why exactly are you looking to move? Is the family growing? Is the family shrinking? Is the family splitting up? A, the first A is agent, right? Are you currently working with an agent? Even if they say yes, you just keep on rolling. Okay, so uh, are you going to be financing this purchase or will you be buying with cash? That is mortgage. Are you pre-approved? And if so, at what rates? And who are you working with? And how free, How recently was that? And then the second A, as Heidi Huffman uh, has spelled out there, is appointment. Appointment, because we know that we want to, the conversation like this counts as a real estate contact. And we make contacts to have conversations and those conversations should lead to appointments and appointments lead to signed buyer broker agreements. Yeah. Appointments are the most important thing. If you can do anything from an open house, the biggest one I think is setting like a buyer consultation and then meeting with that person, going through the whole process. Um, after you do a buyer consult and you do it right, you will not lose that buyer. Um, mm -hmm. that buyer is going to see that no one, uh, no other agent wants to do that. Um, most agents just want to, you know, from the moment they first talk to them, Hey, let's meet at this house, go check it out, check it out, turn on the lights, whatever, but they're not doing, they're not guiding them to help them under better understand the whole process of buying a house. Um, so yeah, that that's huge. Um, after the open house, I make sure I put them in my database. So that's huge but make sure you put a follow-up task or some kind of like automated plan so that you're regularly checking in with them. Um, and then again, with if you weren't able to set an appointment at the open house, just try again when you're following up with them. Um, 
but try to again if you didn't get the lp mama at the open house then do it after with your follow-up but that's pretty much it i mean it you should be getting tons of contacts from open houses it leverages tons of activity and most importantly like it gets you face to face with people and i forget this to the number but I know it's significantly high that the first agent people meet or talk to, it's the one that they end up working with. Yeah, it's uh, less than, uh, or excuse me, more than 70% of people who bought or sold uh, last year did it with the first agent that they interviewed. Gotcha, okay. Right. And, you know, uh, meeting your agent in an open house versus, you know, is, is you know, we said one in 10 people who bought or sold, right? And that doesn't even count the number of people who just started out as leads, ended up in the database, and then got dripped on, followed up on, got a call about a, an opportunity, got LP mama, had an appointment and thought that they were your realtor the whole time, right? So if you're looking to build your database, right, which we know statistically speaking, if you have more than 200 people in your database, you are more likely to earn six figures in real estate than not if you're marketing to it consistently. How many people come through an average open house for you, Rocky? I'd say like five, five, six. Five. Okay. Yeah. So how many, uh, how many buyers do you think you've got? Uh, you know, how many, how many legitimate buyers or sellers come through? So I know I can grab like two to three people that I can like legitimately follow up with. And usually one person is like a next 60 day um kind of business out of every open house every open house yeah if i'm following yeah. if i'm doing whether it's them coming through the open house or somebody might have messaged me i've had people message me like hey i can't make it but i was interested in this house and so on yeah so think about that folks who wants to call a hundred people to get a single appointment when instead you could hold an open house and get two legitimate leads and one person ready for now business. I know which one I prefer to do. Yeah. I think it's uh, also important too, like that you're putting the right kind of, uh, you're categorizing people the proper way. So um, whether they're a nurture, uh, watch lead or hot lead. So hot lead being somebody that's gonna do business in the next 30, 60 days, a watch lead that's probably going to be in the next two uh, three to four months and then a nurture that's probably someone six months to a year out um i think just knowing so that you know how to properly follow up with them and sometimes i if it's a nurture lead and i know they're far out i'll probably i'll just send like a an article to them just to show like hey and add some thought to it so they know that like i'm trying to provide some value to to them at all times You're the man, Rocky. Does anybody have any questions for Rocky about his uh, dominance of open houses? All right. Well, uh, Rocky, if somebody wanted to, if, if they were like, hey, uh, I mean, I love this. This sounds great. Uh, and then they go and they, they're going to go grab an open house and they wanted to just like run something by it. How would they get in touch with you? Yeah, I, you want me to put my uh, contact in the chat? You're like a mind reader. It's amazing. I, just, I know you so well. You do. You do. Yeah, and if somebody wants that presentation thing, Jeremy, our director of ops, made that last year when he started with us. Um, and that was a collaborative kind of thought, um, just presentation he put together, getting the thoughts from our whole team, um, what's the best practices. So. I can send that to anyone if they Yeah, can. go ahead and uh, shoot that over to Carrie and then we'll send it out as follow-up with the uh, the link to the recording. Cool. That's awesome, man. Really, really outstanding stuff. You make it look easy. I know it's not. Um, or you know what? Maybe it is. I don't know. I guess uh, we'll just need everyone to go do some open houses and find out for us. Simple, not easy. Hey, I like it. Well, Rocky, thank you for being a, a, a great uh, feature for us today, a great example of our culture, and appreciate you sharing everything. No problem. Thanks, guys. All right, team, that's it. We will uh, we will see you next Tuesday for our next installment of the sales meeting. We will see you tomorrow morning for Shift into Overthrive. 
And then we will see you Thursday evening if you're interested in learning more about real estate teams in the Rocky River office at 630. Have a great day, folks. Light the fire. No, sorry. Hey, to die.